In this video, I'm going to consider the noise in a single pixel. Uh, in the previous videos, I considered the noise in the amplifier, the, the reset noise of a capacitor, which will be highly related to this video, and the noise of an ADC. I'm going to assume in this video that we have a perfect analog digital converter and that the noise in the uh, amplifier, the output, whatever buffering that you use, is, is insignificant. And we're going to cover the noise that's due to the, the single pixel element alone. And what I've drawn here is a 4T pixel. A 4T pixel. 4 transistor sister pixel. And this was the simplest possible pixel that will allow for in-pixel correlated double sampling. I'm going to hopefully make that clear by the end of the video. Uh, but at, before we get started, let me define what I mean by 4 transistor pixel. Here's transistor 1, here's transistor 2, here's transistor 3, and here's transistor 4. This transistor is called the transfer gate. Transfer gate. And that keeps charge that builds up over here from interacting with the rest of the circuit unless you wanted to. And this is the transistor that would be eliminated if you went to a three transistor arrangement. Here we have the reset transistor, the reset transistor. And this is what will charge this node up to a known value, which is approximately equal to V reset, but it's not exactly equal to V reset because we're resetting a capacitor. And if you remember to the pre in the prior videos, there we're going to charge that capacitor through some resistance that's in the channel of this MOSFET and uh, it's not going to be exactly VR. There will be some thermal noise associated with it. This transistor here is the source follower. Source follower. It's this guy. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And this is the row select. Row select. The row select has no meaning for a single pixel, but when I go into the video about an array of pixels and the noise in an array, you'll see where that comes into play. Uh, what you want to do with when you address a pixel is you'll turn on the row select and spill the voltage out down a column and to an ADC or multiplexing unit or something down there. And you have to have something pulling current through this transistor, otherwise this state will just be at VDD. And so you'll have a, maybe, maybe you have a resistor down there, you have a constant current element, or you have a diode connected transistor. I'm not a CMOS image designer, imager designer, so I don't know what is the state of the art now or how people do it, but you need something there. I had a previous misconception where that element was inside the pixel, maybe there, uh, which is not correct because that would, make the pixel draw lots and lots of power, consume lots of power, draw lots of current when it's not being addressed, when you don't need this functionality. So you put it outside the pixel at the end of the column. Okay, to eliminate confusion, let me erase that element because it's not in the pixel, it's at the end of the column, and talk a little more about what we have here. Here's the photodiode, photodiode, photodiode. And in many applications, probably most applications, uh, there's light continuously hitting that photodiode. There's no shuttering mechanism to stop and start the light, so there's light hitting it, and there'll be electrons generated, and the electrons will go that way, and the corresponding holes will go that way. The electrons will pile up here. You uh, uh, can turn on the transfer gate and spill them over to this node where you have the integration capacitor, C int, and by Q equals C V, where V equals uh, Q divided by C, that's the voltage um, that will be seen here, and you'll read that out down through your analog chain. And you're going to make two samples. You'll make sample one, which you do just after you reset it. So you reset this node, turn that transistor off. This transistor is off and then you read out what this voltage is, and it's gonna, I'm gonna call it VR prime. It's not gonna be exactly VR, it's gonna be some semblance of VR, uh, plus some thermal noise and with some accommodation for the threshold voltage of this MOSFET. So that's gonna be about equal to VR prime, or some scaling factor thereof, depending on the gains of these, uh, of the system that follows it. And then at some time later, sample two, you turn, you leave this transistor off, you turn this transistor on, 
spill the charge over, and then you turn this transistor off because light is continuously hitting it and electrons are piling up. So then you would have your uh, carriers that you're interested in piling up on this node, and they would adjust the potential. Um, it would be equal to VR prime minus some voltage, where that voltage would be equal to the charge that's the new charge that's sitting there, uh, the photocharge or dark current charge divided by CN. And this CN is the primary determinant of your conversion gain of the system, microvolts per electron. I'm going to scroll down and redraw the circuit and walk you through those two samples, sample one and sample two, in a little more detail. I've drawn two uh, circuits, two 4T circuits. I'm going to use them to represent two states of the, the pixel circuitry. Uh, and they're both identical starting out. Uh, let's walk through sample one, the reset operation. During the reset operation, we have this reset transistor, which will turn on. So I'm going to erase that and then redraw it a little bit. Um, and as, as it's on, it looks like a resistor. There's some resistance associated with that, and that's what charges this node, which was previously at some unknown potential, up to VR prime, which is VR uh, plus or minus some noise associated with the thermal noise of this trans of this transistor, um, and uh, the uh, threshold voltage that will be taken into consideration as well. While we do that, right after we do that, we then turn that transistor off again. So let's turn it off. We lock in that state on the node there, on the integration node. And at that point, we turn on this transistor, uh, this row select transistor, and spill that voltage out through the source follower to the ADC. So what will show up here before the ADC is hopefully something approximating VR prime. And that will come out and be our sample one, our reset sample reset sample. And let's say this is the state at time zero. Now, down here I'm going to draw uh, the state at time t1 sometime later. And to keep, what you need to keep in mind is between these two states, light is hitting this photodiode here and creating electron hole pairs, creating electron hole pairs where the electrons are piling up over here, the holes got siphoned away down to ground, and so let's say I let's say during this between T1 and T0 I get two elect two photoelectrons, but also there are other charges piling up dark current. So let's say we had one electron of dark current, dark current, dark current. And so these are photo charges and those are dark current. And, I'm, and I intentionally drew three charges, uh, three electrons, uh, to so you can see how they flow through the system. Well, let's walk through T1. What's the state of the circuit in T1? Well, first thing is this transistor, the reset transistor is off. It's not there. So that node is is uh, sitting there at VR prime. We're going to turn, we have those electrons, those three electrons sitting there, but light is continuously coming in. So we want to separate the electrons from the event we're interested in from the light that's coming in. So we turn off turn on this transistor, let those electrons come over, let me increase the size of my eraser here, those electrons will flow over to here, so now we have those three electrons over here, and then we turn on the transistor again to separate what's going on here from what's going on here. Um, now, uh, we look at the signal chain, we'll turn on our row select transistor and read out the voltage sitting on this node, which is now uh, VR minus some some amount, question mark, where that before was by Q equals CV, so V equals Q divided by C, so the, tr the coulombs associated with these three electrons would be this, the C would be this value, and that's what we would read out there. So then Sample two is our um, signal sample, signal sample. And what we'll do is we'll subtract sample one from sample two to reduce noise in the system, reduce the KTC noise, reduce the, the reset noise on this transistor. 
going forward, I'm going to talk about everything in terms of electrons, input referred electrons, the electrons sitting at this node here. You could talk about things in terms of, let me scroll down, microvolts or coulombs. So uh, some of you will be dealing in microvolts, some, no, well, you usually deal in microvolts, electrons, or digital numbers. And there will be some conversion gain for the system in terms of microvolts per electron or electrons per digital number. And this, in particular, microvolts per electron, is just mostly determined by this capa integration capacitor there. The electrons per dn is determined by a lot more, but you've got to realize at the end of the day, talking in terms of microvolts, electrons, or dn, or coulombs for that matter, are all the same thing if you know the, the conversion gains and constants of your system. I'm going to stop here and go on to the next video.